This month, GTV has gone out on a limb and plucked one of the most controversial issues to talk about. We wanted to know why something so beautiful, such as a diamond, could cause one of the most horrific massacres in history. Those precious diamonds that you see your favorite celebrities flaunting are the same diamonds that have caused loss of limbs and life for millions. We dug deep to find the real issues surrounding the diamond industry in this exclusive feature report. America's longtime love affair with diamonds has sparked a new controversy. It opens a deep wound that starts in Africa and cuts across the world. Diamonds are forever, but to many in the world, diamonds represent decades of endless violence and hardship. The brutal diamond wars of Africa have left more than 50,000 dead and thousands of mangled amputees. Stay tuned as we explore the appalling horrors perpetrated by those who rule the lethal blood diamond trade in Africa. People like to beautify themselves. And this is true all over the world. It's true for men and it's true for women. And the taste for bling is not new. In hip hop, bling refers to expensive jewelry and other expensive stuff. Something that's been around for a long time. Two things, love, commitment. That's how I feel. And actually when you buy somebody a diamond pendant or earrings, it's because you love that person. The World Diamond Council defines conflict diamonds as diamonds that originate from areas controlled by forces or factions opposed to legitimate and internationally recognized governments. So the question is, is every time you put on a diamond, does that make you a partner to somebody who is enslaving kids or, or, or murdering his neighbor? We look at a diamond per se and say to ourselves, boy, this is beautiful, but how does this diamond become what it is? Where does it come from? How is it made? How is it mined? Why is it so expensive? Well, there's many answers to those questions. I think a big part of American media and European media is um, fashion and image, and um, a part of that is being trendy. So if you see like your favorite rapper, your favorite singer wearing, like a big rock, a beautiful diamond, of course you're gonna wanna get that. And since 2000, when they started out working with the conflict diamonds, have I had a customer ask me about conflict diamonds. So more and more, diamonds became a way to help rebel groups pay for their military movements. What does that mean? We are talking about diamonds mined in a war zone, under secrecy, and sold to finance invading armies' war efforts. It is said that he who controls the diamonds controls Africa. Diamonds used to finance these atrocities are called blood diamonds, or conflict diamonds. What are the countries involved in the diamond wars? Well, most recently, it's uh, been in West Africa in places like Sierra Leone, and even more recently than that, uh, Ivory Coast. But originally, it started in Congo and in uh, Angola uh, in the 70s. Uh, those are just examples of countries with diamonds in Africa. And there is clear evidence that most of those diamonds have been used to support the wars in all those countries. It always has to do with resources. Uh, it's people are fighting for, for scarce resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. Blood diamonds are in situations of, of war okay. and, and poverty. You know, because when there is instability, people will try all means to get, you know, an easier way of you know, feeding themselves or, or, their, or their families. After uh, uh, most African countries got their independence about 1960, the diamond business began to expand. In some places, you could uh, dig diamonds out of the ground, and it, it was more individual workers and not uh, not big companies. We produce this mineral to them. Then they got a lot of money. Why we own the land, we don't have nothing. I, I think that life for miners is horrible because they, they are treated harshly. People are just striving, struggling to, to, to have the, the basic needs. I think it's in its way a form of slavery because they have no other they have no other way. They're either going to get killed or their family's going to get killed or they have no other way of making money. The living conditions for men working in the mines I can describe as modern day slavery. Um, they work long hours, 
and they don't get enough rest, um, not enough food, not enough medical supplies. And they are not doing this in any form of mechanized way. It's more of physical labor than anything else. There has been several instances where mining pits have collapsed on people and they are not rescued, they die. Stay tuned, when we return, Gumbo investigator McKenzie speaks with experts to explore what happens when a country falls apart and what life is like for Africans when a rock becomes more precious than human life itself.